welcome you to this special episode during this wonderful season of Christmas. This season is the most joyful season in the history of mankind throughout the world. If there is one word that I can describe about this season is the word joy. I pray that through this message today, you will experience the true joy of the miracle of Christmas. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 11, is a very common uh, test that we read or hear so many messages during the season of Christmas. And it's all about the joy of Christmas, the very reason for the season. The joy of Christmas is all about Jesus Christ. And that's the reason why we have this joy in our hearts. If you look at Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 11, we read there that the shepherds living out in Bethlehem were out in the field all day, taking care of their uh, flocks, and they were tired and they were sleeping. At the middle of the night, keeping watch over their flocks at night, an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you the good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. The first carol was ever sung to any people was by the angels themselves to these weary and tired shepherds who were just taking care of their business. Today you might be tired, you might be uh, weary from all your responsibilities and challenges of life, especially as we come to the end of the year, born out of all the challenges and issues of life, the angel of the Lord is coming to you with a beautiful carol song that is going to bring the joy of the Lord. And this is what the angel is saying to you today, do not be afraid I bring you the good news of great joy. No wonder all the historical carol songs have joy as the main thrust of the songs. Look at songs like Joy to the World, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Another song goes, shepherds, why this jubilee with your joyous strains prolong? Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. I pray that you have the joy of God in your heart today. As a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, as the one who have allowed Jesus of Bethlehem to be born in your heart, you are to have the true joy in your heart. We actually, we have mistakenly understood the word joy. We have compared joy with happiness. Happiness is based on circumstances. Happiness is momentarily. And some people resort for joy in their heart and they get into alcohol or they get into drugs and they try to induce some kind of happiness into their life, hoping that it would bring joy into their heart. But those happiness are momentarily. It doesn't last long. But there is joy that is always inherent in our hearts. The joy of the Lord that is not based on circumstances or situations. And that's why as a child of God, we can be joyful regardless of our situation. Regardless of what we are going through in life. Are you joyful today? Or is your circumstances taken away the joy that God has birthed in your heart through Jesus Christ? I love this Bible verse where it describes to us the single key to the whole aspect of experiencing joy in our lives. This joy cannot be found in anything else. True joy and our true happiness in life is not determined by how we feel, but what we have inside of us. And I pray that during this season of Christmas, you will truly experience 
the joy of Christmas. But if there is one group of people that truly responded to the message were these weary and tired shepherds who were just wanted to have a good night's sleep, the angels came and woke them up and interrupted their routine life. And all of a sudden, the angel came and disrupted their schedule and brought great joy into their lives. Somebody said Christmas is the most delightful disruption to the normal way of how things happen in life. Isn't it true that we've been so busy with life and so many things have been going on, all of a sudden December has come. All our priorities have now shifted into one thing. And that is the focus of making the birth of the Savior Jesus Christ known to a dark and dying world. Let me tell you, it is not about the trees. It is not about the Santa Claus. It is not about the gifts or the celebration of the birth of the Savior Jesus Christ that truly matter. The true celebration of Christmas is in how we are responsible in telling people that there is a Savior born for you this day in Bethlehem. That is our responsibility. I encourage you that just as the shepherds were disrupted from their daily schedule, to allow the season to disrupt our schedule so that we can actually witness the mighty work of the Holy Spirit in birthing Jesus into the hearts of many people who are yet to know or believe in this Jesus Christ. This season is a wonderful opportunity for us to do the work of evangelism. Amen. And so as we look in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 11, first of all, I see the prophecy of his coming. Notice the simple phrase that angels use here to the shepherds. Born this day in the city of David. The city of David, many times people mistake it to be Jerusalem. Let me tell you, it is not Jerusalem, but it is actually Bethlehem. During the time of Jesus, it was a tiny little Jewish community that nobody knew. Bethlehem is called the city of David. Why is it called the city of David? It is because David, the great king who ruled Israel, was raised out and handpicked by God out of Bethlehem. Just as these shepherds were taking care of these flocks, David was also a shepherd boy out in this little village called Bethlehem. City of David was a historical place known in the history of Israel as a place where this great king was raised out by God. Isn't it amazing that God has chosen one of the, the lowliest of the towns, the smallest of the towns, hardly heard of anybody. David was an ordinary man that God raised up to do extraordinary work for the kingdom of God, for Israel, who brought back the Ark of the Covenant, who restored the kingdom of God and its values for the people of Israel. David, a man after God's own heart. From the very town, God also now sovereignly moves the virgin birth of Jesus Christ in the womb of Mary in this little town of Bethlehem. There is another fact that you will be so interested to know that 700 years before the actual birth of Jesus in Micah chapter 5 verse 2, there was this prophecy spoken about the one who will be born. It says, but you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be the ruler over Israel whose origins are from old, from the ancient times. And so when the angels spoke to the shepherds, here is the prophecy being fulfilled right before their eyes. A prophecy that was spoken 700 years before the actual event. So I thank God that this is a historical event. We are not celebrating uh, the birth of somebody who is a mythical story or, or a hearsay, but this is the actual fact that was historically happened in the history of mankind. I thank God the prophecy that has been fulfilled, that we are part of a, a legacy and a tradition and a history that has actually revolutionized mankind. 
I often tell people, every time we put our signature and we put our name and we put our date, we are actually declaring the birth of the Savior, Jesus Christ. And so if you put the date as 25th of December 2014, you are actually declaring it out, making a declaration through your signature that on this day, 2014 years ago, a Savior was born for you in the city of David. Hallelujah. And so today you might be thinking, I'm an insignificant person. I'm nobody. I have come from a town that nobody knows. Let me tell you, I was born and raised in a street that has no name. Uh, if I tell you the little town where I was born, you wouldn't even know. If you go and Google search my little town where I was born, you may not even find in the Google Maps. But that doesn't matter. God can raise up ordinary people, ordinary uh, contestants. He can raise you up to fulfill his purposes on this earth. And God is showing to the world Exactly the prophecy that this little town that nobody knew would become one of the top five destinations for the tourism in the world. Today, Bethlehem is, is a place of destination for thousands upon thousands of people as they go and see this little town. The second thing that we see here is the reality of his coming. Look at the verse again. The angel said, unto you is born this day in the city of David. Just focus on this three words here. Born this day. As I said, it is a historical reality. That's the reality of his coming. There are two aspects of the truth that we need to mention here. The first is that there are no miracles associated with the physical birth of Jesus. You know, Jesus was born naturally just as any other babies are born. There is no description in the Bible whether uh, Mary had a supernatural birth experience. The miracle is not the birth, but the miracle is the conception of the baby in the womb by the Holy Spirit. When Mary asked God, how shall it be? Well, the Holy Spirit said, I will infuse, I will birth in your womb the seed. So the uniqueness of Jesus Christ is not the birth, but it is the conception by the Holy Spirit. Something that has never happened or will ever happen again in the history of mankind. God had birthed this in the womb of Mary. And the second thing that's important here is this day. On this very day, we do not know the exact date of the birth of the Savior Jesus Christ, but we do know it happened on a particular day, a particular time in the history of the world. And so when we read, unto you is born this day in the city of David, let's remember that something really has happened for me on that day when Jesus was born. The third thing that reminds us from this verse that Luke writes here in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, is the result of his coming. Now we come to the climax of the verse. It says, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. A Savior, which is Christ the Lord, is born for you. Here is the interesting fact that comes from the Greek test of Luke chapter 2. When Luke wrote his account, he didn't use a big essay or a big article to elaborate on who this person is to explain the greatness of this Jesus Christ. He simply draws three powerful vocabularies from the Greek terminologies to expound who this Jesus is. He is number one, a savior. Number two, he is Christ. Number three, he is Lord. Who is a savior? In the Old Testament, a savior is understood to be a deliverer, a deliverer of people. Moses in the Old Testament was considered to be a deliverer. He was called by God to be the deliverer of God's people from the bondage of Egypt. Likewise, Jesus is now 
the final, the ultimate deliverer. I love the book of Hebrews where the writer of the book of Hebrews says and addresses Jesus as the better high priest. As the better covenant, as the better uh, intercessor, as everything that Jesus does, there is something better than what has already happened until that time in the history of mankind. Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. There is no other savior but Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only one who have ever lived on this world who was prophesied to be the savior of the world, who actually lived out the life of the savior. When he died, he died as the savior of the world. And when he rose again from the dead, he rose again from the dead as the resurrected savior. Now the Bible says he is the risen savior who is the living high priest for us in the heavenlies. He is right before the Father God. He's interceding for us even right now. And so the work of Jesus continues till he comes back again to this world for us. Not only that he died for us, not only he took our sins on the cross for us, but he is praying to the Father God for you and me every single day. Aren't you glad that we are celebrating the birth of the Savior? That's why we are joyful. That's why we have true joy in our heart. When we think about the birth of a queen or a king or a sportsman or a Bollywood star, there is some kind of an excitement, but there is really not the same excitement like the excitement of the birth of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came for me. It says, born for you. That's a very personalized word from the angel to you today. That Jesus was born for you this day as a savior. Secondly, it says that he is Christ. What is Christ? Christ means the one who is the anointed one. He is the Messiah. The anointed one, where the Holy Spirit, have, God has anointed him with a special anointing for the purpose of the Savior. For the purpose of redeeming mankind from its depravity. So today, we have a Messiah who is the anointed one. And thirdly, it says, Luke says, he is Lord. Lord talks about the deity of Jesus Christ, that he is uniquely divine. He is Godhead in one. He is Jesus, the one who is embodiment of God, the manifestation of God for us. Today, you can know God. You can understand God and what God is like, his love, his grace, his compassion for us through Jesus Christ. You do not know what God looks like. Look to Jesus. He is everything that God is. He is love. He is compassionate. He is merciful. He is forgiving. He is loving. He is reaching out to those who are lost. He, Jesus came to seek and save the sinners. He did not come for the saints. He came for the sinners. And so today... Jesus, he is our savior. He is our Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. He is our Lord, the one who is divine. Jesus is unique. Then there is nobody like him. There is nobody that can be compared to our savior, Jesus Christ. And that brings us to the fourth and final point that I want to share with you from this verse. Look at this King James Version that says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David. I love the King James Version because it brings that first emphasis at the start of the verse. For unto you. You see, you are the reason for Christmas. It's not about God, but it's about you. You are the apple of his eye. That God loves you so much. That God cares about you so much that he decided to send his son Jesus to this world. About 25 years ago, when I was a student in Sydney, Australia, I had the privilege to go to an Anglican church during the Christmas time. 
As I entered into the lobby of the church, there was this beautiful manger that they have set up. And there's Joseph and Mary and all the wise men and the shepherds and, and the baby Jesus. And as I looked at this baby Jesus, all the lights and everything looked so glamorous and beautiful. But on the baby Jesus was a dark shadow of the cross. As I looked up to the roof of the little room that they have created, I saw a cross and from behind the cross, they have put powerful lights that would shed a shadow of the cross on this baby. You see, when you think about the birth of the Savior, we have the excitement and the joy and the, the Santa Claus and the jingle bells and the Christmas trees. But let me tell you, I don't think on that day in heaven was a great day of celebration. Because God in heaven knew that this son that's going to be born on this day is going to be dying on the cross. That he came to give his life as a ransom for many. The Bible says that he came to die as a ransom and as a savior for the whole world. You see, Jesus is not a God for the white people. He is not a God for the black people. He is not a God for the Chinese. But this Christmas celebration and the joy of the Christmas and the fact that Jesus is Savior is a universal phenomenon. This is a global celebration of the birth of the Savior. Yes, it was a sad day in heaven. I don't think the angels were singing carol songs on the day Jesus was born. I believe the God in heaven was aching in his heart knowing that he is going to be crucified. That God's son will be crucified. But I'm glad that God loved me so much as we read in John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. That God so loved the world. He sent his son, Jesus Christ. It doesn't say that God so loved the Europeans. It doesn't say God so loved the Americans. You see, Bible and the, the faith of Jesus Christ and the, the experience of Christian faith and Christianity is not for one region or one people or one ethnic group or one state or one caste, but it is for the whole of God's creation. For God so loved the world, he gave his son, Jesus Christ. That's the true gift of Christmas. The true gift of Christmas to you is the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. Knowing and receiving the atoning work of Jesus through the cross on that Calvary. Amen. But let me encourage you. That as God sent that joy bundled up in the form of a little baby in the manger. And this baby will be called Emmanuel. God with us. I pray that you will take this gift and not only really open it, but you will receive it in your heart. Make this Jesus, as Dr. Luke tells us, the Savior of your life, the Christ of your life, and the Lord of your life. May Jesus Christ be the Savior, the Christ, and the Lord of your life this Christmas. You see, Christmas to us every year in December, as we end the year, what a way to end the year and begin a new year, reminding us once again that Emmanuel, God is with us, that Christ has come, the Savior has come, the Deliverer has come into you and to your life and to your family and to your town. Hallelujah. Christmas is a sweet reminder to us that God is with us. Emmanuel, Jesus, he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. May Jesus be truly born in your heart this Christmas. May the true joy of Christmas be born in your heart this Christmas. Would you invite this Jesus to come into your heart? Would you receive this joy in your heart that will remain with you not only during the season of Christmas, but every single day of your life? That's why Paul said, we can rejoice in the Lord always. And again, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord. May the joy of the Lord fill your heart.
this Christmas. Let me pray with you as you allow God to come into your heart. Would you repent of your sins and, and, and turn from your wicked ways and come to the Savior that was born for you this day in the city of Bethlehem. Father, we just thank you for speaking to us so powerfully from these words. Thank you that in this verse we see the prophecy of the fulfillment. We thank you that in this verse we see the purpose of your coming, the reason for your coming. Thank you, Lord, that in this words you have revealed to us that we can truly have the joy of Christmas because we are now saved from our sins and our bondages and our sicknesses and even our death, the death of this world. We thank you that we can have that eternal joy in your presence. Even when we have died and gone on from this world, we can enter into the great joy of your peace and your presence. And for those that are receiving you as their Savior, today I pray that you forgive them of their sins, Lord. Come into their hearts. Wash their sins away and come into their heart. May you be the Savior, the Christ, and the Lord of their lives. Bless everyone who is listening today. May we truly have the joy of this Christmas in our hearts, not only this season of December, but every day of the year. We pray your blessing upon us. And we will be careful to give you all the praise and glory. For we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.